Hey guys, it's Chris. From legendary lands said to exist to mysterious sounds and newly discovered creatures, here are eight deep sea mysteries. Number eight, is Atlantis truly real? You know the legend already, one of a great nation that was at one time one of the most advanced nations in the world. Then, either by the hand of the gods in punishment, or by the earth itself, the nation sank into the sea. And this is the legend of Atlantis. Now, despite what some people think, this was not a land born from the idea of money or media. It was actually something that was first noted by the great philosopher Plato, who wrote about it in one of his works. He described a haven having a narrow entrance, but beyond that was a real ocean, and the land surrounding it may most rightly be called, in the fullest and truest sense, a continent. He says, Now in this island of Atlantis there existed a confederation of kings, of great and marvelous power, which held sway over all the island, and over many other islands also, and parts of the continent. His works The Timaeus and Critias were the original starting point of Atlantis in history, in terms of documentation. All other references to it are based on Plato's works, and many feel that he wrote about Atlantis as an allegory, meaning to show off what can happen if a country gets too powerful for its own good and thus be struck down. But some have taken it a bit more literally. They believe that Atlantis may truly be real, and if it is, it needs to be found. Many have actually searched areas that are said to hold the lost kingdom of Atlantis. And it's not as if we've mapped the whole ocean, so the potential for this nation to have been real and then sunk is very plausible. Archaeologists are also out there looking for it as we speak. Until that point, though, Atlantis will live in all of the TV shows, movies, and comics that were inspired by its mention in Plato's writing. Number 7. How deep does the ocean go? When you think about the Earth as a whole, you no doubt think about it in terms of the land and the oceans. After all, the oceans cover a large portion of our world, and the question of what's in them has inspired many to explore their depths. But the farther they went, the more another mystery grew, the one of, how deep does this actually go? In truth, we honestly don't know how deep the oceans are, because we can't fully reach the bottom. The closest we've gotten is the Mariana Trench, which for the record is 36,000 feet below sea level. That's deeper than Mount Everest is tall. However, that's not the deepest part of the ocean. It's believed that somewhere in the trench is a deeper section, one that puts the ocean even closer to the core of the Earth. The only problem with this theory, of course, is that we're unable to prove it for ourselves. In the history of the discovery of the Mariana Trench, only four people have ever gone down there, and each time it was only for a limited stretch, a few hours at most. And a sustained trek through the trench is impossible due to technological limitations and the immense pressure put on objects at that depth of ocean. Until we can compensate for that, how deep the ocean goes will continue to be a mystery. And now for some bacteria that will amaze you, but first, have you subscribed yet? Be sure to click that little button and join us for some more World List videos. Number 6. Deep Water Photosynthesis on land, one of the most important natural processes in the world today is that of photosynthesis, where plants absorb sunlight in order to make food and grow, and thus give oxygen back into the world. And the most important thing about photosynthesis is that of sunlight. Uh, if you've got no light, then you've got no photosynthesis. Or at least that's what we thought. Then some researchers went deep into the ocean and found some bacteria that appeared to be photosynthesizing underneath the waves. And there was just one problem with this. Mainly, the bacteria were found over 7,000 feet below sea level, where the sunlight does not reach. So how is it using photosynthesis? And the answer, in part, is that this strain of bacteria lives very near thermal vents. That's vents that shoot out hot water warmed by the Earth's core. And the glow from these vents was apparently enough to allow photosynthesis in these bacteria. These organisms are the champions of low-light photosynthesis, one scientist studying the bacteria said. These guys have the most elaborate and sophisticated antenna system, which we've studied for a long time in organisms that are relatives to the one discovered near the vents. 
So the question is, how is this possible? How is it that such low levels of light are able to cause such processes to form when it was believed that only massively powerful lights could do it? And the research continues. Number 5. The Immortal Jellyfish Did you know there's a jellyfish out there that seems to have true immortality? Like literally immortality, as in it lives forever. The scientific name for this jellyfish is Turidopsis dornii and it has a very unique ability that allows it to be immortal, mainly that it doesn't ever become mature. Now known as the immortal jellyfish, it will age until it's an adult, then it'll go and mate, and once the mating's done, it'll actually revert back to its younger form or its juvenile form. And now since it's basically young again, it'll start the aging process once more until it goes and mates, then the jellyfish will revert back to its juvenile state, and the cycle repeats. And since the cycle can repeat, that makes it immortal. However, it can obviously die via injury or being killed by a predator. But in regards to the aging process, it'll never have to fear going on beyond a certain point in time. The mystery here is pretty basic. Scientists are honestly just not sure how the immortal jellyfish does this act. To literally reverse aging is something that no other creature that's been found can do. So obviously they're researching this immortal jellyfish, so that hopefully they can learn how it does this reversion and whether or not it can be replicated. Number 4. Could extinct creatures still be alive? One of the big reasons why the oceans of our world are so mysterious is because we don't know all that lives in there. Much of our knowledge is based on hands-on experience or guesses based on science and biology. To that end, one of the biggest guesses we make in regards to the ocean is what lives in it, and what doesn't. A great example of this potential folly is the coelacanth. For 65 million years, the coelacanth was thought to be extinct. This fish was created during the Cretaceous period, which is when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. And by the time we got to this modern age, it was just assumed that the coelacanth was extinct. Especially when fossils of the creature were found and no other fish in the water that we knew of looked like it. But that all changed in 1938. A museum curator of all things caught this long dead fish. And not only was it a coelacanth, it looked exactly like the fossils that were found of its kind. Furthermore, since that point there have been other sightings of the coelacanth in the water, which basically proves that their species is alive and well, just out of reach of humans for the most part. So thus if the coelacanth is alive, then what other ancient or prehistoric creatures from the ocean could still be alive? The possibilities aren't limitless, obviously, as water-based creatures from the dinosaur age of massive size likely would have been seen by now. But the smaller ones, while well, those could still be around. And there are many places in the ocean where they could be hiding. Number 3. Ocean Noises The ocean is full of life. And much of that life has been recorded to the extent that certain sounds in the ocean are easily identifiable. But occasionally, the ocean has produced noises that honestly make no sense to modern science for the most part. Two of the most popular of these noises is Upsweep and Julia, and others like the Blop have come to be mysteries of their own. Officially speaking, scientists believe that these noises are nothing more than natural events in the ocean, carrying over a long distance, such as icebergs scraping along the ocean floor, or plates of ice breaking off and creating a unique sound. But again, that's the official explanation, but not everyone is convinced. What's more, the fact that there are many sounds that the ocean is making has made some wonder if there's something else going on beneath the depths. Number 2. Milky Sea Phenomenon Bioluminescence is a process of the body of certain animals and plants that allows them to glow certain colors. And there are some areas of the world that have plants or algae that illuminate certain areas of the water. However, well outside of these areas, sailors from many periods of time have noted that the oceans or seas that they've traveled on have glowed for unknown reasons, and never in the same spot. Or even stranger, it'd glow in the day or the night which is a direct contrast to various areas that have bioluminescent plants or algae. Adding to the mystery, in 2006, a satellite image of one of these milky seas was captured, and scientists determined that it wasn't plants or algae doing this, but actually a massive group of bacteria. 
But therein lies the question. Why would bacteria come together in such mass and propagate in various parts of the ocean for days at a time? Some scientists think it's because they're trying to attract food or even fish, but that's not been proven. Nor does this explain why this phenomenon happens at all, or why it happens in only certain parts of the ocean or seas or various other bodies of water, and not others that seem just as likely to have it happen. Number 1. What other life is waiting to be found? Perhaps the biggest mystery of the ocean is that of what else there is to discover. Because on the surface, you'd think that we didn't have much left to find. But in fact, that's not true. At present, we've only officially mapped about 5% of the oceans. And that's just in terms of knowing what's there in regard to the landscape. In terms of life, well, we still don't even know all that's down there. A great example of this is squids. For a long time, they were thought of as mythical monsters, hence the Kraken legends. But then, one washed up on a beach and suddenly they were very real. Then when you think about the Mariana Trench, you'd think that nothing could live without protection at 36,000 feet, and yet there's a whole ecosystem down there that thrives in the pitch black. But because we can't stay there for long periods of time, we can't explore and find all the life that's there. While we do know a lot about our world and our oceans, we don't know everything about the continents and life forms there. And until we figure out a way to explore it all, it'll remain a mystery. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these deep sea mysteries? Which ones intrigued you the most? Do you know of any other mysteries of the ocean? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldless before you leave, and I'll see you next time.